Welcome to the final segment of Durham TV Viewer Questions Week for February 2013. Today's episode will feature questions from DurhamTV.com viewers. Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and welcome to Durham TV. Today's first question comes from Yana, and she says, Dear Dr. Schultz, let me start off by thanking you for all the great skincare tips you've given me over the years. My question is regarding glycolic acid and peptides. If I apply a peptide moisturizer after my glycolic acid, will I still have the benefits of both the glycolic and the peptides? And the answer, Yana, is yes. Glycolic doesn't interfere with peptides. We've spoken about certain acids interfering with retinoids, but not with peptides. And really, it's a matter of, you know, I think we should be putting our glycolic exfoliant on first after you've used your cleanser and toner, and then putting your peptide product on afterwards is perfectly appropriate, and you can still get the benefits of both. Next question comes from Sandra, and she says, I have a small sebaceous cyst on my face. Is there any way I can treat this without having an incision? Well, Sandra, a sebaceous cyst is actually a mature little tumor in which you have a, a lining around a whole collection of oil. Think of a sebaceous cyst like a basketball or a volleyball, where the air inside the ball is really the oil that's come out of the oil gland, and the actual rubber of the ball is the lining of the cyst. So you have this large, um, this large ball of material that's covered. In order to get the material out to make the cyst flatten down, sort of like letting the air out of the ball, the only way that that's going to happen is if you make a little hole. The real question is, when you have a sebaceous cyst on your face, do you just make a little hole in the cyst and squeeze out the contents, the oil, which is like letting the air out of the ball, in which case the lining of the cyst or the lining of the ball is still there and it can refill and then you may have to work on it again. Or do you have a larger incision made in which you can actually shell out or remove the entire ball, the entire cyst? But there's no way you're going to get a mature cyst um, to go away without physically removing either the contents through that little incision or the actual whole cyst by cutting the whole thing out. And when we do that, of course, we have to put a few stitches in to give you a cosmetically superior result. Next question comes from Morella. Uh, hi, Dr. Schultz. Is there a cream to remove butt pimples? Is there any way to prevent butt pimples? What causes them to appear? Thanks. Butt pimples are like pimples anywhere else on your body, except that on the butt, there's a lot of rubbing every time you sit, any time you do exercise, and there's sweating. So uh, butt pimples are closer to back pimples than to face pimples. And the bottom line is to prevent butt pimples, uh, you would use an exfoliant, the way we use exfoliants, to prevent any kind of pimples anywhere on your body. And of course, I would suggest using a glycolic exfoliant. Um, I think that using a 10% strength on that skin would be appropriate to use on a daily basis to try to prevent it, along with getting out of your wet um, exercise clothing or wet clothes or wet underwear as soon as you're finished exercising because rubbing in wet clothing tends to induce um, uh, pimples more. And um, is there a cream to remove butt pimples? The same creams that we use um, for pimples anywhere. So those are spot treatments with salicylic acid, uh, sulfur, resorcinol, topical antibiotics, and of course, my favorite, glycolic acid. Jessica says, why do I have redness where I had my acne? I've been having them for seven months already, meaning red spots. Shouldn't it be faded already? Well, it's not as red as it used to be, but I want it to be completely gone. How do I fade them faster? Can I use a V-beam laser or any laser? Or just wait till it fades on its own? Um, I think that uh, Jessica sort of has summed it all up. Number one, the redness is there because there was an injury to the skin. That injury was the pimple. And your body wants to bring additional nutrients in to help heal where the pimple was and it brings those nutrients in through enlarged and gorged blood vessels. And there's so much blood with the nutrients in it, in those blood vessels, that you actually see a pinkish color. Well, at a certain point, the body's finished repairing and that pinkness should go away. So at seven months, it's probably time to make the pinkness go away. It's probably being kept there unnecessarily long. And you're quite correct. 
The only way to do that is with the laser, and the laser you mentioned, the V-beam laser, is a perfect laser for helping to do that. So you can use a V-beam laser, you can use a VersaPulse laser. There are lots of vascular lasers that dermatologists use to help get rid of that pinkness, but at this point, at seven months, if it's still there, it's probably time to see a dermatologist and have that redness removed. One other thing you can do, you can try an over-the-counter cortisone cream, a 1% hydrocortisone cream. You can try that for a couple of weeks, uh, twice a day, and that may help fade it uh, before getting it treated with a laser. But if that doesn't work, then it's time to see your dermatologist. Mara says, hi, I have rolling and ice pick scars on my forehead. How can I get rid of it? I feel ashamed of it. Please help me. Well, Mara, the uh, real issue with either rolling or ice pick scars are that they need to be either filled with uh, fillers or else they need to be actually excised. So ice pick scars, very difficult to fill with fillers. We actually cut them out, put a few stitches in, um, very small incision, and we get very, very good results. Rolling scars, fillers help lift up rolling scars, but you can also treat those with lasers because lasers can induce your body to make your own collagen instead of putting in filler and collagen from the outside. So no matter whether they're rolling or whether they're ice pick, you're going to need help with this. Medicine is not going to make acne scars go away, regardless of what type. Last question today um, comes from Gull, and Gull says, do you think by using 2% salicylic acid toner in the morning and 8% AHA gel in the evening, and when she says AHA 8%, I think she's probably talking about glycolic, although it could be lactic, am I over exfoliating? I'm 30 years old and battling with acne, and this seems to be working perfectly for both keeping wrinkles and acne at bay. I appreciate all the time for these videos. Thanks a lot. Um, go. I usually don't argue with success, and we're not going to argue with it here. If using 2% sal acid and 8% alpha hydroxy, whether it's lactic or glycolic, is keeping your acne in check and helping prevent pimples, that, and it's not causing irritation, then you're not over exfoliating. And it sounds like you found a very good, well-balanced regimen to help take care of both of your problems. So that's it for this month's Viewer Questions Week. And don't forget, the subjects from so many Derm TV episodes come from your questions, which are great. So please keep sending them in, and I'll keep answering as many of them as I can. Please join me again at DermTV.com. If you have a question, please send it to me by visiting DermTV.com slash question. I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and thank you for watching today.